In this video, we're going to cover some of the basics of design on the Maverick CNC machine that we have at our high school. Now, the software that we use is called Aspire. Now, we have two versions here. This was an updated version. So I'm going to demonstrate on the older version of Aspire. Just double click it. But everything that I do, all of the items that I'll be picking here exist in the later version. So we make that big. Now, if you're doing a nightstand and doing an engraving in either the drawer front or the door or both, the directions that I'm giving you should be the same. You'll just have a different image here to manipulate. So I'm going to show you where both are, but I'm going to design on the door because it has a, um, it's not a square image, and I'll explain as we go. When you open it up, you need to come over here to open an existing file. So I have a template made up so that uh, you already have your measurements put in. So when you do that, there's a couple of different templates here. It's labeled template. So the one for the drawer front, this is the older one, the 8.5, AF drawer front template, click on it, open. Now the way that this is set up is, this is exactly 14, this is exactly five and a half. When you do your shaper around the edge, you're going to lose about a half an inch, and that's what these lines are. These are imaginary lines. They're not going to show up. It's not going to engrave these lines onto your drawer front. They exist only to tell you don't uh, put any kind of image beyond these lines. Okay, so here's the drawer front, and I'm going to demonstrate on the door and what all these are in a second. So we'll close this down, and we want to open the other one. So here's the drawer front, the door template, 8.5 right there. Open it up. And now what is this? Okay. If we shrink it down, this is a picture of the nightstand. Now, what you were looking at before, of course, is the drawer front, and there's that decorative edge for the imaginary lines, and that's why. The door has a little bit more of an interesting shape. What you're looking at when you're in the software, the extents are the same as the outside of your door. So if I zoom out just a little bit, it is 14 and about 12 and a half. So here, this is 14 by 12 and a half, but we can only engrave right here in the center. I don't want to put any engraving out here. It's just here. So the drawing you see is this. I outlined exactly where that is. So when you're looking at it, that is what this is. This is the panel that we can actually draw. Now again, I could make it so that this line is engraved on there, but it wouldn't do any good. It's just the outline. So to keep it from being engraved, we will simply not do anything to it. We won't erase it. We won't do anything. If you don't assign it to do something to these lines, it won't do anything for those lines. It won't even see that they need to be engraved. All right. So here's our engraving area. And remember, if you're going to do this on something else, you'll just have to go through and tell it how big it has to be, and we can go from there. Here are some of the basic commands. When you're over here, you're going to be using these most of all, the create vectors. CNC machines only see vectors, which is a line. So what I'd like you to do is to do one kind of box or outline or some kind of border with some letters inside of it, outside of it, somewhere else on here. So let me give you some simple examples. You're doing a circle, click that, grab, pull, there's a circle. Okay, and we can close that. You could tell it, you could assign it a radius or diameter if you wanted a specific size, or you just eyeball it like I did. If you wanted an oval, okay, there it is, an ellipse. If I press um, shift, it won't move around. If I press control, it remains a circle. It just, it just depends on what you want. And again, you can manipulate the size, anchor points, and so forth. For now, we're just kind of eyeballing where I want it, and I'm giving you some ideas. Close that out. Square is pretty obvious. Just click and drag until you're happy. Close it out. Um, these polygon and star, we can click and drag. There's a polygon. You can tell it how many points you want. I'm going to go up to 10 points and hit apply. OK, there it is. There's my star. It's got 10 points. I can change the inner radius. In other words, if I lower that down to 50, now all of a sudden the points are more dramatic. They go in further. So things that you can change, move around, I can even uh, stretch it out if I want to. So get it to what you want, close it, and I'm going to stick with this one. I can stretch it out if I like. So I'm going to get rid of these. Just click on them, highlight, and hit delete. There. Now this, if I click it twice, it gives me these little bars and I can move it around. That way, now that it's stretched, I can get it on here centered. 
Now, how do I know that it's exactly centered left to right, up to down? Okay, you go back over here, transform objects. You hit this button right here, aligning it. Do I want it aligned left, right, up, down, or both? Click both, and you can see that it moves it to the center of the door. Now we go ahead and close that out. Now, of course, this is a bit too close to the edge here. So if I click on it twice, I'm just going to hit the down arrow on the keyboard. That way my mouse doesn't accidentally shift it left or right, just twice, maybe even three. There. So I'm looking at the distance here to here is about the same here to here. It looks good. Now your image can be anything you want. It can be a little bit bigger so you can stretch out a little further. It could, doesn't have to be this star. It could be a polygon, a, an arc, whatever. So you decide which one. Play with it a little bit until you're happy. To do letters, we can do that. And I'm just going to put my initial, E. All right. You go down here and decide what font you like. And I like the Times New Roman, but you can pick any one. I'm going to make it bold. And I want it centered. And all of this is pretty much the same. So if I want my text to be bigger, I can put in some different number. 0.5 is about right. But you're free to change it to 2 inches, 1 inch, whatever will fit in here. And that's fine. Hit Apply, Close. And it sticks it up here. But just grab it, pull it right over. All right, now half an inch was too small. So even if I'm not in that view with that control panel, I can just drag it out a little bit until I'm about happy with what, I, what it is. So again, I go up here. I'm going to center it as well, both ways. And then I can close that out, grab it, press down until I'm happy with where it is. There, that looks about right to me. OK? Um, some other features that people would, be, would think was popular, uh, you can put letters on, an, on a curve. For example, let me, let me make some more letters here. I can just write my whole name, Ellefson, and hit Apply. And then we can drag that down here. Go ahead and close that out. So let's say I want my name to kind of follow this arch. And then I can put it down here. What you do is you highlight both. So that I have both the arch and the name. And I can grab this button. And it says, select a single line of text and curve, which I did. I have both. And it won't even highlight this unless you have those. I want it below the curve. I want it centered in the middle. And I want the letters to be aligned so that they're, they're not straight up and down. So they actually go along that arch and hit Apply and Close. All right, so there it is. So if I want to drop that name down just a little to make sure, well, we don't want to take the arch with it. So make sure to just grab the one and then drop it down. So now it's inside the arch. Okay, So to zoom in and out, it's on the mouse. You can roll forward and roll back so you can get a little better look at what you want to do. Now that I kind of have a general idea of what I like, now we can assign the engraving to these parts, these different parts of it. So you come up here to this symbol right here. This is where you're switching to a different toolpath. Now I assign. In the later version of this program, this symbol is up at the top toolbar. So we just hit that. Now here is all the things you can do to those vectors. The ones you guys will be using most are this one, the profile, and the v-carve. Probably the v-carve will be most often. So for straight lines like this border, I'm going to highlight it. Then come to this, tool, this profile tool path, something that just follows a line. And we hit that, and then this big, long thing comes up. Um, don't worry about the advanced tool paths. We're not going to get into anything really advanced. Start depth is 0. In other words, I want it to start at the very top, the surface. And I'm going to cut only an eighth of an inch deep. And that's pretty standard. Remember, it's a V-carve. It's a V-bit, which means going in an eighth of an inch will make it a little wider as you go up the V. OK, so the tool path, V-bit, 0.5. If that's not correct, go to Select. And you're going to go to your V-bits right here, 0.5. And it gives you all of the information. And really, the only thing that I plan on changing, if at all, is the spindle speed. I want it at 24,000 RPMs. 24,000 RPMs. That's pretty fast. If it's different than that, just type it in, type in the different number. So 24,000, click off, and you've got to apply it, and you're good to go. Hit OK. Now we have our bit assigned. Now this one is, what do you want to do with it? Do you want to cut on the outside? And you can see it shows you what it's doing. Inside, same thing. 
or directly on top of the line. In this case, I want it right on top of the line. If it's a border, usually that's what you'll want. Ramping, we want to ramp in. In other words, the bit will get to the very surface of the cut and ramp at an angle down into it instead of dropping straight down like a drill bit would. It's better on the bit. So we want to ramp and take and an, in a half an inch, it will drop down that eighth of an inch depth that I told it before. So I always encourage ramping. Definitely you want to ramp. Don't worry about the tool, the tabs. And I want to name it, not profile one, but border. Okay, and hit calculate. Now it takes us into kind of a 3D view. This is the tool path. The, the bit will come over and then uh, cut down into the wood and then go around. So you can preview it so you know exactly what it's going to look like. So that's the path, but what will it look like when it's cut? We're going to take, this is the preview tool path. You're going to lower the speed and then preview tool path. And you can see that's what it's going to do. That's exactly how it will look when it's done. So it went in about an eighth of an inch, so it's roughly a quarter inch from here to here. And it just goes all the way around and then lifts the blade back up out of the wood. All right, so that's my border. I'm happy with that. If you're not, now is the time to go back and change it. So if you're good with that, we close this, and I want to get back to my other view. So we just go right up here, door template, right there. So now I've assigned a tool path for this image. Now we click off. Now I want to assign both uh, this one and this one separately. So here's another vector, and this time I'm going to v-carve. Now it uses the exact same bit that we used for the first one, and most of them will. But again, select. We're going to that half inch V-carve, everything's right, the 24,000, hit OK, that's fine. And we are not doing any of this, uh, ramping is fine, okay, none of this is something I'm going to change. The only thing is once you select the bit, you're good. And then go down here, I'm going to name it letter E, there we go, and hit calculate. Again, here is the tool path, and I've got my speed down, and preview. That, that's what it'll look like. So just kind of go in and zip that out and make, gives you nice sharp edges. All right, I like that one. That works exactly the way I want. If the letter's too big or too small, of course you can stretch it, change it, you can always go back. All right, so that's close. And we go back to our image and now I want to do my name. So different, gonna, it's another tool path, but I'm gonna use the same V carve right there. Everything's the same, starting at the surface, same bit. And I know that's right because once I change it in one, it changes for all of them. None of the rest of this is changing, and I want to name it uh, my name. So Ellefson cutout or text. I guess I could put in text. Might be easier to remember later. And calculate. All right, there's a the tool path. And we'll preview. There it is. And that's what it looked like. It's not nearly as deep as this simply because it's a smaller letter. It's just more narrow, so it's not going to go quite as deep as this one will. But I like the image, and that's how I want it to look. Uh, remember, feel free to change things, move it around. Uh, you don't have to have a letter inside. You can have it to the side and put something over here. It doesn't have to look exactly like this. I don't have to have this. All I do want is some image, some border somewhere and a letter or letters, your name or some saying. It can be a long string of letters. It doesn't bother me either way. But once you finish it, um, and notice that I did not assign this outside curve to anything. So when I go to the CNC machine, all it will see is the code for this, and that's all. Now that you're happy, we're going to save the, uh, this program. We want this uh, work that you're doing. We do that over here, the normal file, save as and I want you to call it your name, okay? Ellefson or whatever your na last name is, so we can always find it on another place. And this is a door, and I've already got door one, so this will be my door two, and I'll be able to find it when I need it. Now, all you've done is saved this working file on my machine. It that has nothing to do with the code, the G code, to run this, this file on the CNC machine itself. That is found right here. If you can remember a long time ago, the floppy disk, that's what this looks like. That means save tool path, not the project, but the tool path. Um, 
so here's my tool paths. And of course, you have to highlight all the tool paths right there. There. Now it sees a border, letter, text. Just make sure to highlight it right here. I didn't have any of these highlighted before. Now it sees all. And you see that all of them are the same bit. If you need to change bits, the machine will stop and move to a place you can change the bit uh, once it's finished with each element. If they're the same, that's fine. This is, a po this is the list of all the machines that Legacy makes and what they can work for. It defaults to Legacy, 3-axis, CV, arcs in inches. We don't want it metric, in inches. That's what it is. So find it and highlight that one. OK, so what we're going to do is save tool pass to file. Now, of course, it'll say, where in the world do you want this to go? In my uh, documents folder right here, G code. OK, it's right here in my computer, G code. And it's called Ellefsendor 2. That's fine. It's got the same name. And save it. So that's where it is. Now I can cancel out or just shrink it down. What I need to do now is take that G code, which is right here, G code. Okay, it's underneath quick access, and this is all on my computer. There's that Ellefson door two. Highlight it, right click, copy it. You're going to put in a memory stick, a flash drive. Lower it down. I've already got one in there. It's called AF Woodshop. And in all of my flash drives, I've got to have a folder that says G code and another one that says laser engraver depending on which one you're using. This, of course, is the G code. So we open it up, and you right click, paste. Ellefson door 2. And now you're all set. We're going to take this flash drive over to the CNC machine, put it on the laptop that runs it, and we're going to engrave. Make sure that uh, you know I'm there. The teacher is there to help make sure everything is set up correctly. But um, it'll, be, it'll look really good depending on what you want. And we'll make sure that it turns out really sharp. 